and welcome to Orient Update. I'm Township Supervisor Chris Barnett and I'm excited you joined us. Today we have a very special guest joining us to talk to us a little bit about the Orient Township CIA. And I'm not talking about the Central Intelligence Agency, I'm talking about our Corridor Improvement Authority. So what in the world is a Corridor Improvement Authority and why is it important to you, our Orient Township residents? Today I'm joined by Gary Roberts, Economic Development Consultant to Orient Township. Gary, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor, pleasure to be here. So Gary is a great friend, uh, and we've been able to work together for several years on a really unique and fun project. Uh, matter of fact, it goes back to when I was first considering running for office and campaigning. Uh, I asked lots of residents questions uh, about what they wanted to see in our community, and one area that continually came up was we need to do something about Brown Road. And, uh, and, and I listened, and uh, I did not have all the answers, and that's why I'm joined by an expert here today, Gary. Um, but um, the Quarter Improvement Authority is a great tool for us to do some economic development and some much needed economic development, in my opinion, at least. Uh, so Gary, again, thanks for joining us. Talk to us a little bit, first of all, about what in the world is a Corridor Improvement Authority, and uh, I know we have some, some other things we're going to go through as well. So, well, well, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. And you do have a great story to tell with us, with, the, with our, our local CIA. Uh, for those of you who don't know what it is, the, the Corridor Improvement Authority is enabled by uh, Michigan Public Act 57 and authorized by the Orion Township Board of Trustees. It is a seven-member board that, uh, that is appointed by the trustees. Mr. Supervisor is the chairman. Uh, Treasurer Donnie Steele is also on the board, plus five other people who are either concerned citizens or landowners within the district. So anyway, late in 2016, just a little bit of history here, uh, the Corridor Improvement District was established. And it was established as a zone and I'll put up the first slide here. It was established as a zone that um, basically enables us to capture property taxes within the limits of that district. And I'll come back to how that works in a minute. But really our district on the, on the east is on the east side of Joslin Road, uh, nearing uh, about the edge of the self-storage place there, running west then about 13 or 1400 feet deep all along the north side of Brown Road hits the intersection of Baldwin, and then turns north and parallels the frontage, and the frontage properties which parallel uh, Baldwin there, all the way up to a little road called Hidden Timbers, which is the top, of, the top of our district there. All in all, it's about 400 acres total, you know, a very small percentage of the, of the town. But the question is, why would you want to establish this district? Well, the Corridor Improvement Authority has, and I'm, there's too many words on this page, but there's, the Corridor Improvement Authority has, has some specific missions. First of all, as you identified early on, traffic congestion on Brown Road is a limiting factor for us. It was just so untenable for new prospects to come in, they would take one look at it and say, sorry, you know, we like your community, we like your area, but we're gonna have to pass. Secondly, you know, facilitating pedestrian and, and bicycle circulation along those routes, it was something that just didn't exist before, and so, we needed, to, we needed to address those kinds of issues as well. And third, the, the idea that the uh, Oakland County Road Commission was going to improve Baldwin in the great way that they did, it was, it was time to lever that, uh, lever that improvement and to see if we could make something more out of it. So, so that's, that's what we're doing it. But how does this start? Why does this start? You know, Brown Road is anchored at each end, one end by Joslin, one end by Brown within our district. And, and for us to, to, to move forward and, and make some meaningful improvements there, you know, your initiative to, to, to initiate the design and to change the, uh, Brown Road from three to five acres was gonna solve the traffic problem. So at that time, when, when the community put out on the street that we're gonna get on this design, we're gonna control it, we're going to run this through the Board of Trustees and through the Corridor Improvement Authority Board, and we will be large and in charge. So we, as economic developers, went forward and told that to basically everybody we could think that would listen, okay? Mm -hmm. All the real estate community was engaged. Hey, look what the community is going to do. And that worked because about that same time, then Menards heard about the initiative. They came to, to, to you and said, Mr. Supervisor, we like Brown Road so well. We'll come there 
but you have to commit to us that this brown road will be done and that's exactly how the board went through is that right yeah and so so yeah i mean this is a, a great uh, kind of kickoff to to why we started this and i think just at more of a thirty thousand foot view um, communities they have a couple different approaches to economic development um, there's the sit back and wait approach <laughs> which many communities take and that's not necessarily a bad approach um, but then there's what we're doing is much it was seen as more a, a lot more proactive and so instead of just waiting for people um, to come in and, and the previous township boards had done made some really nice strides in kind of um, creating what's called the brown innovation zone district so it's a kind of a, a more flexible zoning and they did that to try to attract this investment um, but we kept finding out over and over after different applicant came forward, different groups, companies, they kept looking at the traffic studies and saying, Brown Road can't support, as you stated it, with the three lanes of travel there, any real more, any more real development on the north side of the road, which is Orient Township, the south side is Auburn Hills. And that's why we came up with this proactive plan. And, it's, and, and one of the most unique parts about it is the township, we own no roads. We don't own any roads. We don't own, we're not responsible for the maintenance right. on any roads. So the fact that we would invest millions of dollars into um, assets that we don't own was also kind of a unique proposition. The county owns all our roads. Um, but we did that because we had um, these groups coming forward saying, we want to be in Orion, we love Orion, we like the demographics, we like the location, proximity to 75, we need help. <laughs> right, and I think there's even a higher level issue there. This is the first slide that shows you that really truly the 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 the, the, the land uses that were happening along the north side of brown road weren't reflective of the community we have this southern gateway and it had and it was create taking on this image of as you can see here this looks like the surface of the moon with heavy equipment parking and all of the wrong things there that weren't accurately reflecting the, the great community that we are and all the beautiful developments we have just north of this this very bottom edge so you are coming into town from the south and setting the wrong stage so it, you know I think the authority was quite correct in saying we need to reposition these properties we need to we need to get rid of that and, and I started to say at the, at the same time that that Brown Road initiative kicked off after many years of I know your personal lobbying you got the Road Commission to improve that uh, with the great new thoroughfare that it is and the roundabouts and all that. But if, it, as, as I understand it, if you didn't do anything besides that, you'd have a place for cars. Yeah, so, so that's the road commission, because of their limited budget and the thousands of miles of roads they're tasked with maintaining, uh, when they do build new roads or, or do these road projects, you get just that, you get the surface of the road. Uh, you don't get all of the landscaping. Um, if, a, a good example, if you're from this area, if you're watching, you probably are. Uh, if you look at the roundabout that was just completed in Oakland Township, our neighbor to the east, uh, at Adams Road and Gunn, uh, so not far from Orion Township, that's basically what we were planning. We were going to be getting a mound of grass, a nice mound of grass. And what we wanted to do instead was be proactive and find a way to make this beautiful, pedestrian-friendly thoroughfare with, with lush landscaping, um, and I kept going to other communities during this design process back even before we created the Corridor Improvement Authority and pitching these ideas to the Road Commission. Uh, and they said, that's great. You can do it if you can pay for it. So that's where this, this um, and I know you started talking about it, but that's where this really unique tool, and a lot of people might not totally understand how this works, because we're able to do um, millions of dollars of improvements to our community at zero taxpayer, zero tax increases. Um, and that's because we're actually capturing the money, that's why this is a tax capture, on the new investment that's coming in and paying back these improvements over the course of, in our case, 20 years. And so a lot of people when we started this had these questions like, Gary, we're not in favor of this because we don't support raising taxes, and I don't either. So tell us a little bit about how that works and, and why, why this is a great tool for communities like or I will, or I will. And, and again, what we're obviating is some of these images here now that th this is the concrete crusher site, keep that in mind. A number of these old and dilapidated houses, keep those in mind. And you can imagine how little those were generating in terms of real property taxes. There was no investment there. This was just coasting for many years and years and years. So the whole idea of the, of the Corridor Improvement Authority is to, is to generate a platform for new investment. And so the way that that works is, let's say that this house on the screen here was worth fifty thousand dollars. 
Well, if you scrape that off and put in a $10 million store, that additional value, of course, has an increment that is taxed. And portion of that can go back to repay the debt. And I'll come to the, the cost that we spent a little bit. How about if I, I, I walk around and show you, give you a little update on some of the new things that are really happening right. in the district right now. So I'm back on my map, and hopefully you can see my pointer. At the very east end, on the east side of Joslin, I'm going to describe to you 12 projects that are going to come forward, uh, that, are not, that are coming forward or in play or otherwise under construction or moving definitely. Because remember, you know, one of my favorite quotes is that Abraham Lincoln said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. Well, that's really, Mr. Supervisor, what you're doing here. So let's talk about the future here. Going, I'm just going to go east to west and south to north. Uh, at the east end, the, the self-storage place is planning a new project. They're going to build a, a climate-controlled one, a very unique facility. Jumping across the street, I hopefully you've been all been to the new Tommy's Car Wash, which I personally think is one of the coolest car washes on the planet. <laughs> And right next to that, that same, that same gentleman is going to put up a 8,000-foot uh, uh, small retail store on the surplus site that he has. Next to that, if you can picture where the traffic light is at Checkers, going north from there, a company called Contour Development, a very prestigious developer who, by the way, just purchased the Northland Shopping Center. They're, they are uh, very credible and very well-funded is going to put in a, a large mixed-use complex that comes north off of the uh, north off of Brown there behind Checkers, and then turns and runs out to Joslin and develops a bunch of this proper property up here. But the first four buildings he's doing are exactly the vision that 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 we have had, which is some first-floor retail and two or three floors of stacked flat residential above. This is going to be very cool stuff. This is the sort of the antithesis of what's there now. Uh, which is nothing. I'm going to jump west again. This blue, this blue box here on my map, that's 13 acres, owned by a company called Grand Management. Uh, Jason, Jason Kishmish owns that and has done a great job of site planning. He's planning two restaurant pads on the front and three hotels in the back. And if you drove by there today, you'd see that that is actually under construction. Remember that surface of the moon shot that I showed you a little few minutes ago? That was looking down on the Menards site from above. So Menards was, was an instrumental driver in kicking this off. That's the first project that really changed the complexion, that really brought us meaningful change in a big block of land right in the middle of the block, and, and we're, we're happy with that. You, you know that, of course, Aldi there came as an outlot, and they still have one more outlot to sell. Remember I told you to keep in mind that concrete crusher shot with all that heavy equipment sitting around it? Well, of course, now this is, this is the new Pulte development, which is what, Chris, 100, acre, 100 units? Uh, it's a, just north of 100 units, townhomes, and um, beautiful townhomes with garages, and they're selling for the high threes and low 400s. Um, right. It's a for sale product, and it's just a real neat mixed use. And, and kind of when we envisioned this corridor, when we put these marketing materials together, when we kind of went out to the development world, we, did kind of, we didn't want just all big box, like on the south side of the road in Auburn Hills, and nothing against that, but we wanted to have mixed use, so the future of retail isn't always real certain as you know we've gone through this pandemic. Um, and we, to be able to see the mixed use of housing and hotels and, and retail is, is exactly what we kind of drew up. And, and of course, the driver of that is the biz zoning, which you facilitated, as a township, which allows for these broad ranges of uses, provided they're comprehensively planned and blend together. Right. And so you, you've accomplished that very well. So that's here. Moving on west again, uh, a Hyatt House Hotel has acquired and owns a property at this location right on the curve as you're coming uh, west on Brown. And, and uh, they, they, like many of the hotels, frankly, have been slowed. Uh, the pandemic did not help them. That's probably one of the hardest hit industries in total because people just were not staying in hotels and even largely now aren't staying in so many hotels. But they own the property and they have a site plan uh, unit there. Coming around the corner, uh, you've I'm sure all seen the, the, the really nice new Lazy Boy store. That took out some dilapidated properties and put in a beautiful new store. We should be all very proud of that. And that that change those kinds of things are changing the intersection right there as we speak coming north there is a developer who has a under contract this large 
one of the largest pieces in the in the district here and the frontage of the church site here this blue box and is planning something really unique and we're really hoping and pushing him to to, to, to try come along so very that, excited we can't tell you but it's gonna be it'll be a, a really neat development it, for our community. It, it's gonna be good so these kind of images show you that you really can you really can create the future look at how cool this is not not too many people have projects like these this Menards remember the surface of the moon doesn't look like that now it looks pretty nice to me the latest architectural design all these stores have is right here and you see kind of in the background over the over the roof of this the the townhouses sort of rising out of the ashes of the concrete crusher which I think is super neat and if you can just hold on that go back for one second and one of the things we wanted to point out is not only did we uh, during this whole process we incorporated design standards um, of course we want to be nicer and <laughs> look look nicer and, and, and even when you do have big box retail we want it to be welcoming so we co incorporated these design standards so in this picture you see the landscaping between the sidewalk and the store uh, with the trees which in a few years will be large and and very um, well you know it, it, it just makes it a nice you don't just see a sea of asphalt is what I'm trying to say the pedestrian lighting over the sidewalk requiring sidewalks um, this was a dream of mine. I traveled to Chicago for my previous career and I took pictures when I was running for office of, of things that made it, you have to have retail in every community, but to, you don't, it doesn't always have to look like these giant um, blacktop driveways and then a store set back. Um, so we did want to incorporate some of these things and that's one of, the, one of the things I'm really most proud of as well. So, uh, yeah. But you can carry on with, with the other developments here. Just the fact that you're talking about pedestrian anything along Brown Road. If you recall the old days, it would have been a life-threatening event to try to walk <laughs> right, along there. Right. Now we, it's facilitated. It's facilitated not only with nice walking paths, low-level lightings, plant material, and, and all the rest of it. So this is, again, the complexion of the earlier slides to these, these beautiful townhomes up there. And I have to believe at the rate they're going, by this time next year, they'll be completely done. Th and that's their projection. I actually think uh, the next spring selling cycle, it will be completely sold out. Right. Many of those already, when you drive through there, have sold signs on them. Come around the corner. This, again, some of those boarded up homes and dilapidated things that were on this site. Now we have this beautiful new Lazy Boy store. So it's really cool. Going north up there, and, and I think most people oh, have the seen fountain. the <laughs> fountain and the nifty roundabouts and all the 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 components that go into changing the complexion of the community. Uh, you know, these are hardscape things, but they're not by accident. They're thoughtful things that you guys came up with. Yeah, and so so I think this is again, I think, and I love the Abraham Lincoln quote, but we chose to create our future, and I'm grateful for a township board that um, was a, a caught the vision as well. Uh, um, you know, many communities, I don't mean this as a dig, but this is a, this is a huge project. I mean, we literally spent thousands of hours. Um, it's certainly not on, it's not in my job description. Um, we didn't have to hire you, um, but we did catch the vision. And, and all told, and, and even if you don't live on the corridor, even if you're not going to purchase a, Breck, a townhome in Breckenridge, um, in my opinion, all of these improvements benefit all the residents of the community. They increase our property value. They make our community uh, someplace that you want to choose to live in. You know, we, when, we're, when we're deliberate about, had we done nothing, you know, we're investing more than $8 million in these corridors. Had we done nothing, there when, when Baldwin Road uh, was complete, it would look like M24. The median of M24, I get a lot of complaints about because we get, it gets mowed four times a year and it's a collection for garbage. It would have looked just like that. Um, so we didn't do nothing. We did a lot and we were very proactive uh, to, to actually really kind of um, set our own future. So in the way I look at that, building a fountain and a roundabout is neat. But it, I can't tell you how many compliments we get from people that like to just walk up and down Baldwin and, and um, sure. want to live in our community or have sold their houses. And we're looking at, at some studies to see what our real estate, how our real estate is tracked versus our neighboring communities. And I, my hunch is once we get some of that data back, we'll see that we're not just on par, but probably above because we're bringing these amenities to our community. Right. I wanted to touch briefly uh, for the audience purposes on, on a little bit of the numbers. As you mentioned, you spent a little over $8 million. The, the lion's share of that was, of course, on the Brown Road uh, reconstruction, but also along the, the pedestrian and landscape improvements on, uh, on Baldwin. And the way that that works, just so that everybody knows, that money was loaned by the Board of Trustees essentially to the Corridor Improvement Authority to make these improvements. 
to, to pay that back, that tax increment that we've both described of, 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 of incremental increases in investment that have created the corridor, we need to, we need to create about $338 million on this overall 400 acre track over a 20 year period. And then with interest, the town is paid back and is whole. And then from then on, it's all gravy. It's all, it's all going. And that's partly due to the, due to the, uh, the taxing agencies that are contributing here. It's, it, Orion Township is of course the leader, but we had the county, we had the, the library board, we had the police, we had the uh, community college and others, NOTA, all of those contribute to this investment by diverting some of their, or deferring some of their tax for the future. And they were very smart to make that investment because they were already being- Yeah, and we made that pitch. I mean, I actually went and we spent a lot of time. I mean, I, the, the one meeting I, I, I remember very well was the Oakland Community College Board of, of Trustees and we made our presentation and the, the pitch was pretty straightforward. And going into that meeting, I was told that they didn't support it. And uh, they came around and supported us, uh, and we were one of the first first groups that um, got almost unanimous support through the entire process in the county. But what the pitch was is, if you support our quarter improvement authority, you're you're kind of partnering with us and in invest in this investment. And they're actually long term; they're already making more money than they would on those vacant, dilapidated properties. But after the capture is over in 20 years, they will exponentially increase. So we really weren't taking any money from them. We were asking them to partner with us so that we could help grow this into what it is today and what it's going to be in the right, next 15 right. years. And I, and I think we're very proud of that. And we'll get off the numbers here. But just so you know, of, I, of the $338 million that we need to, to be even up in 20 years, I'm tracking right now almost $200 million, And it's only our fourth year of existence of projects that are in play. So I, I'm really confident with all the additional vacant land right. that we have that we will be able to fill that in. And you know, I think I mentioned this one time before, but it's a very rare term in real estate to have a happy property. We have a happy property. <laughs> and here it is, the, the, the playful dragon. The pocket parks, this is just one of the many features, but it's amazing to me when I tour with people, they come and go, you guys have a big playground dragon? <laughs> And your corridor? I said, yeah, we do. Where's a happy place? We, we wanted to, again. I mean, this was the, we had some really great ideas throughout the whole whole planning process, and we've sought a lot of grants. We received a grant from the Ralph C. Wilson Foundation to help complete this project. We want to be unique. We want to be pedestrian friendly. We want to build things that help um, support the businesses that are being built around it. I can tell you, Menchie's loves the Playful Dragon because they have families that come get ice cream and then go out there and play. Sure. Um, so, so, I mean, again, I think um, as we kind of wrap here, um, it's been great to talk, to, it's been great to work with, with Gary. Um, just even just yesterday, we're filming today, and just, just yesterday we had more suitors coming through, and the response is pretty much the same from all of them. We can't believe that we're in a community that's proactive like this, that's really kind of taken the first step. We've sort of set the stage to help, you know, facilitate them bringing these really cool developments to our community. And Gary, I know you um, give give a lot of credit to me and the township, but without you, we wouldn't be where we are for sure. So I want to thank you. Well, I appreciate um, that. And just just I don't know, in kind of, kind of in closing, um, hopefully people have learned a little bit about this unique uh, tool that the state gives us to to do economic development. But what what else is there? Anything else you think that we well, should I cover? Just, I just want to leave your, your audience with the understanding, if if no, there's no other takeaways here, that these things don't happen by accident. These are very deliberate that you have a very talented planning director and you have some great consultants on, on that side as well. But the, the innovative zoning, the innovative financial approach to how this gets done and, and the proactivity from your, the supervisor's office, not just you, but the rest of the office is really what makes this go. And so I just want everybody to understand that this is 1%, one, less than 1% of the total town but much, much bigger in terms of our image, in my opinion. Yeah. And I think you, you should take great credit in, in we, We've been being recognized nationally uh, for the project. Um, we've won awards. And, um, but to me, I hope the, the main takeaway is the residents that get to use the pedestrian amenities that, that um, choose to move here because of it or just more, more enjoy the community. Look, we were going to get a four and five lane road at Baldwin. We couldn't stop that. I mean, I know we needed it. Some people didn't want it, um, but we, Took, we took a really proactive approach, as we've said many times, to not just take what we were given, uh, but to find a way to not raise our residents' taxes, 
do millions of dollars in improvement to our community that hopefully we'll be able to enjoy for, for decades to come. So um, we have inspired of some of our neighbors as well, which is okay, we like to, sh we like to share here. Um, uh, then there, some of our neighbors are following suit to kind of take some, some similar approaches. Um, and, and I'm really excited about some of the things that we're not even really able to share yet, but I think our residents will also enjoy their coming to our community. Right. So we want to, um, I guess, last, the last thing I want to say, and I, I will give you the last word, but um, we want to thank the businesses along both corridors um, for their patience. I mean, we know in the residents, I mean, it was a multi-year construction project. We still have some sprucing up we're going to be doing. Uh, we're not quite done yet, um, but we know the, the businesses, certainly along Baldwin, that live with three years of construction, we're grateful that they're still here, and we want to support them as well. Um, but Gary, any, any, any final thoughts before we wrap here today? I, I, just, I just want to tell you that, you know, it's, I'm very proud of the fact that you help create something on paper, and then you get to live and help to implement it and see it come to life. And I think you and the rest of the community, and certainly myself and our firm, are very proud of what you've got here. Well, I appreciate that, and we've seen those businesses um, that weren't even part of the project invest reinvest because they saw us, us investing as well So it's been kind of a cool trickle down, right? So we hope you have uh, learned something new about our local CIA today on uh, Today's episode of Orient update. Thanks for tuning in and we will catch you next time